Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Matt. And this beautiful hunk of rusty metal right here is my grader, Christine. This is a 1950s Galleon Road Grader, model 503. And I've been doing a video series on this thing, kind of fixing it up, going through it. I pulled it out of the trees uh, a couple months back. And we're trying to get this thing back to operational condition so I can use it to work on my driveway here as well as various projects in the future. So, as a lot of you have pointed out, old Christine could use some new shoes. So, so I reached out to old Simply Tire since I've been using them for a while and as a satisfied customer I said, hey, you guys want to hook me up with a couple tires for old Christine? And they said, sure. So I got two brand new tires for the front of the grader here that's going to help snazz her up and uh, maybe she'll start warming up to me when I start really putting the love to her. If you never use Simple Tire, they're a great, easy to navigate website. They have all kind of car, truck tires, and they even have off the road tires like we need for old Christine here. As an honest Simple Tire user, I've used them plenty of times in the past, and I did not even know that they carried tires for stuff like this. So if you in need for some tires, the link's in the description, go ahead and down there. And uh, since they're helping support the channel, maybe you guys give them some business too. Anyways, enough about that. Let's get these tires yanked off of here. I would just like to take this opportunity to show how hard this gravel floor is packed in the shipping container shop as well. A lot of people said that this was going to be nothing but pain, and I'm sure for certain things it will be, but it packed hard enough to use a roller jack on, and that's pretty darn hard. All right, that's high enough we can get the tires off. That ain't supposed to happen. The whole stud came out with that. And that one. And we got one left. Yep. Well, only one, one stud remained in there, but that's all right. Now hopefully these things will slide off of here without a ton of beating. Hey, that was easy. Shouldn't say that too loud. Never ever say that phrase too loud. You know, I have no way to prove it, but the tire tread pattern that's left on these tires, and they are pretty well smoothed over, but I can tell what tread pattern they used to be, and it's an old tread pattern that they haven't made for quite some time. Uh, it's possible, again, I have no way to prove it, but it's possible that these are the original tires from uh, the 50s or 60s when this thing was made. So I think Christine's earned a new pair of shoes. See, this one comes off as easy. Oh, that ain't a good sign. Uh-oh. Man. We might need a hammer here. Hopefully the old three-pounder will knock her off because it's uh, my sledgehammer is not in my truck where it's supposed to be. Not sure where I left it. bit of persuasion. Whew. What do you guys think about that, huh? <laughs> That's one heck of an upgrade in the tread department, I'd say. These things look pretty narrow right now, but I'm thinking once we get them mounted, they should look the same. I'm hoping. I mean, these they are the same size tire according to the sidewall, but uh, 
yeah, let's get these things broke down and we'll find out. This is the part that always sucks. There are special bead breaking hammers you can buy, but of course I don't have any of them. Sometimes these tires that have been on here for a long time like this, it is quite a struggle. And these tires are so stinking hard, it's unreal. I think I'm just gonna try to get the locking ring broke loose. This is a three piece rim. I didn't think about it, I should have broke the bead loose on these tires out at the farm with the stinking dozer. Wasn't thinking. The old locking ring is looking pretty crusty. You guys hear the rust crunching as I'm working the bar around her? Oh, what a sound. This is one of those things that I don't do enough to be proficient at. I've changed quite a few of these over the years, but unless you do this all the time, you forget all the little tips and tricks. Probably should have watched a YouTube video on it first. Oh, it's, it's just that easy, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was a struggle. This thing is pretty near rusted through in several places. That's a shame. Hopefully we can clean it up and still reuse it. I mean, look, it's pretty well gone down here. This must have been where this rim was sitting on the ground, I'd bet. Hmm. outer ring should just come off and it does it is also pretty scaled up but definitely reusable now here's the part where it would be nice if the rim just fell right out of the tire but I'm highly doubting that probably have to work it with the bar oh actually feels like it might move without too much work All right, I've been beating on that tire for 10 minutes with a sledgehammer. I'm done playing around. Well, I didn't figure it would pop it off, and it didn't but at least it gives me an easier access to try to work this bead down. Man, these old tires can be stubborn. Oh, hard on the ears. Screw this, I'm cutting it off of here. What a 
mess. That was a pain in the rear. <coughs> Keeping on with the done playing around approach we got going here, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this tire, or what's left of the bead of the tire, in half, and then I'm sure that we're still gonna have trouble peeling that up off this rim after it's cut. Hallelujah, it's moving. Oh, there we go. See how much rust and corrosion and junk was holding this stinking thing on there? So we finally got our tire completely off the rim and I would be ready to put it back together normally, except these rims are so nasty and scaly and rusty. I don't want to put new tires on that and tubes because what will happen is the rust scale will uh, come loose of the rim over time, work its way in around the tube and end up popping our new tube and tire. Well, the tube, it wouldn't hurt the tire. But what I'm going to do is take the needle scaler and go ahead and scale this whole thing all the way around and uh, make sure we get really good up into these surfaces where the locking rings engage. There's a lot of hysteria out there about multi-piece rims, split rims, you know, there's lots of names for them, but basically they are very dangerous if you're an idiot. Um, if you don't pay attention and the, the ring isn't engaged properly and you start putting air to it, yeah, it, it's probably gonna fly off of there and it, it has killed lots of people. But if you use your head and be cautious, uh, they're, they're really not that big a deal. And once they have air in them, they're fine. It's just the air in them up part that can be dangerous. So what I do is I set my regulator on the compressor to whatever pressure I wanna put in the tire and I make sure the ring is engaged properly and seated how it's supposed to be. I'll wrap chains through the rim and around the rings so that if something were to happen it's contained and it can't go flying across the garage and take off my head um, and at that point I'll stick the tire chuck on there a locking tire chuck and I'll let it start to take air and I'll just walk away and it'll fill itself up to max whatever I have the regulator set to and then it should be good I'll come back cautiously approach it make sure everything looks good and then I'll go ahead and disconnect the air and take the chains off if everything's all right and knock on wood, I've done a bunch of these and never had an issue. I think you guys just watched me struggle enough with the last tire, so I'm not going to make you sit through this one. I'll bring you guys back when this thing's apart. Whew! My lord, you wouldn't believe the struggle I had to get this second rim off of here. I almost gave up twice. But I finally beat it. I ended up cutting the tire all the way off, having to cut both the beads off, peel them off, and then take the needle scaler around the locking ring before I could finally drive it off with a hammer. It was an ordeal. You can see this locking ring is a good bit more rusted than the other one was, but the important parts of it are still there. I think we can still use it. I'm gonna go ahead and take the needle scaler now and start cleaning up this whole rim. The rim itself actually looks like it's in better shape than the other one was. It's gonna be a loud, tedious process. Hold your ears.
tedious process. I took the needle scaler, cleaned these up really nice, and then I ended up taking the wire wheel around them too, make sure I got all the flaky stuff and little bits of rust on it. Before I put it back together, you know, if I put it together like this with all the bare metal, it's just going to do the same thing over again. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some primer and paint on these things to keep them, uh, keep them protected so we don't have any issues in the future. And, uh, you know, I'm not doing a full restoration on this grader, but I am trying to, I guess, do everything right, you know, as I'm doing it. If I see an issue, I'm going to correct it. The inside, or I don't know if this is the inside, outside, whatever side it is, the side that you'd see after it's mounted, I'm not sure that I'm going to paint those right now. Uh, I might wait till down the line a little bit when I paint the whole machine, but definitely the time to do this is now before I put these tires on, so let's get that done. This is the same primer that I used on my dump truck bed whenever I painted it a few years back. And uh, this primer has held up excellent. Anytime anything happens to that dump bed, you know, if the paint gets scrapped, scraped off or whatever, uh, it scrapes down to the primer, but it doesn't hurt the primer unless it's something major, like a gouge it with a tooth or something on a bucket. But, you know, rock dings and stuff, it never seems to get through this primer. I really like this stuff. It's an XO Rust brand, I think. Yeah, XO Rust Professional. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but they make a good product. Well, I just finished priming out all the pieces here for our rims. Should be looking pretty good. I'm going to let them dry overnight. And then I'll come back tomorrow and throw a couple coats of yellow on them, if need be. At least one. I'm going to apologize for the noise now. They're starting on the siding on the house today. Everybody's been telling me to pressure wash it in previous videos, and I haven't bothered because they were going to replace the siding. So this should be the exact same color I used when I sprayed the engine. Uh, looks pretty nice. Okay, got all the rims painted up as much as I want to paint them right now. I probably should have went ahead and just brushed the insides of the rims too where you're going to see them. But uh, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, I really hate brushed paint. The only reason I did this is because it's a nice thick coating and it's on the inside of a rim where you'll never see it. Apparently the primer wasn't quite dry when I started putting the yellow on this rim and it made this really cool ripple effect there with the red and the yellow. Looks pretty cool. So the one great thing about split rims is that they are incredibly easy to mount. So we got this rubber flap that goes against the rim. We got our tube that obviously goes in between the flap and the tire. And what the flap does, the rubber flap protects the inner tube from the rim. We'll go ahead and coax all this in here with our valve stem through the hole in the flap. I've made a cardinal mistake here. I said they were easy to mount. It's really not too bad. Probably easier if they're laying flat on the ground. Now the next thing we're gonna do, and we could probably get away without doing this on a multi-piece rim like this, uh, we're gonna lube up the beads just to make it easier to get everything seated how it's supposed to be. And this lube is just hard. Lube always makes things easier, doesn't it? Now since we've given a liberal application of lube, go ahead and try to get your valve stem started first. 
Oh, without breaking your inner tube. And then just glide this puppy on. Oh yeah. Look at that. Now the first thing I like to do before I bother to start trying to put the rings on or anything, make sure the tube isn't twisted. We'll take the valve core out and just blow a little bit of air in there and then let, let the air pressure come right back out and might do that two or three times and that'll kind of let the tube fill out all the places it's supposed to make sure it isn't bound up at all and then if it is you're not out anything trying to pull it back off of there. All right, everything looks good with our tube. Our valve stem's still nice and in the center of the uh, slot in the rim. We'll go ahead and put our rim pieces back together. Well, there we go. That actually went together pretty good. This uh, The ring looks like it's seated nice all the way around here. Of course, I marred the crap out of my nice new paint, but I figured that would happen anyway. Uh, we're ready to put the valve core back in it. We'll go ahead and put some air to it. Uh, I'm going to take the chains. Like I said, I'll put a couple wraps around this thing just for safety's sake in case something would happen while we're airing it up. If it blows apart, the chains catch the pieces. They don't kill anybody. So... Make sure when you're hooking your chains too, you give enough uh, room for the tire to expand, otherwise you'll be have to deflate it again to get your chain off of there. Okay, I got the pressure neck down to about 60 PSI. Uh, that's not the pressure I'm going to run these at, but it is the pressure I want to inflate them to the first time to make sure everything's seated nice and tight against the beads and all that. So. We'll hook this thing up and walk out of the garage for a while, but you guys get the front row seat in case something does happen. Alright, tires inflating. Stand back and watch the show, huh? Well, it sounds like I quit taking air, so the first thing I do is come over here and take a quick look. Well, not a quick look, a really good and thorough look at the lock ring here and make sure everything's seated properly. It doesn't look like anything's half cocked or anything like that. Our chain's still got some slack in them. Tire's seated all the way around there on this side. We'll pull the inflator off. We'll flip it over and examine the back side, make sure it's seated all the way. And uh, then I'll take the chains off. Yeah, everything looks good. I think that lube helped us out a lot. Especially because this new paint, it's always so sticky, the rubber doesn't want to slide on it. So here is something that I must have overlooked uh, when I was inspecting our rubber flap in there. I don't know if you can tell, the rubber flap apparently had a slice in it and it's letting the tube kind of bulge up here into our opening in the rim, which is uh, definitely less than ideal. Probably last a long time like that and I'm not gonna take it apart now, but uh, I'm gonna make sure the other flap doesn't have that same issue before I put it together and if it does, I'll replace it. So if you never change one, I hope that sheds a little bit of light on uh, split rims here. Or everybody calls them widow makers. They're really not that bad if you're knowing what to look for and you're careful in your work. Uh, this wasn't meant to be any detailed how-to video and I'm by no means an expert, but they're really not that big a deal. Just be careful and use your head. But anyways, 
You saw me do one. Let's go ahead and get the other one slapped together. We can go get these back put out on Christine. Okay, there's two tires ready to go back on the grader. So I just noticed something cool here in the tire too. There's a stamp down here that says Firestone 1161. So I see no reason to doubt that these are the original rims that came with the grader. And I think that means that our grader is probably a 61 or 62. Sometimes the components are made the year prior to the assembly of the machine. So yeah. I think that's some pretty good evidence. Maybe she's not as old as I thought she was. Looking good. And those are going to look sharp on the front of that machine. Right, look at that, huh? Don't that look snazzy? Oh man, old Christine is just loving her new kicks. I do have one keeper missing here that was missing when I bought the machine. I'm working on tracking one of those down, but I haven't been able to locate it yet. So if you know where I can find one of those, drop me a comment down below. I appreciate that. Alrighty, look at those new kicks, huh? Those are snazzy. So again, guys, I gotta give a huge shout out to simpletire.com. Like I said, if you haven't heard of those guys, go ahead and check them out. They've got every type of tire imaginable over there and easy to use website and affordable prices. That's why I use them. And uh, big, big thanks to them for sending these over to me. They help out the project immensely. So now I just got to get the engine tossed back in it, some hydraulic lines redone, and old Christine's ready to go to work. If you think Christine could use the rest of these tires replaced though, go ahead and drop me down a comment below. See if we should put the same tires from the front onto the rears. Well, that about wraps up this video, guys. If you like these videos of me fixing up this old grader, let me know down below by dropping a comment and make sure you hit that thumbs up button. That really helps the channel out. I've got a lot more content on the grader coming as well as many other projects. The weather's getting nice. I'm outside. I'm getting a lot of stuff accomplished. So stay tuned. Lots of cool stuff on the way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Later.